public policy has an impact on almost every aspect of our daily lives. So, join us in today's video as we discuss the various theories of public policy. These theories will assist government officials, policymakers, politicians, civil society groups, and the general public with valuable insights into how public policies are formulated, implemented, and evaluated. Welcome back to our channel, where we delve into various aspects of public administration and its impact on the society. As indicated, in today's video, we will be discussing the various theories of public policy. Before we get into the specific theories, let's briefly define public policy. Public policy refers to the deliberate actions taken by governments or governing bodies to address societal issues and achieve desired outcomes. Essentially, public policy is whatever governments choose to do or not to do to solve problems of the society and improve the quality of life for its citizens. There are many different public policy theories. However, in this video, we will focus on some of the most common ones. Now, let's begin with our first theory, which is the elite theory. The elite theory assumes that a small group of elites hold power and make decisions for the rest of society. This small group of influential individuals or elites come from various backgrounds such as business, politics, or academia. This theory can be applied to public policy by assuming that policymakers are a part of this elite group and that they make decisions that benefit their own interests, rather than the interests of the general public. The elite theory essentially assumes that, decision-making powers are concentrated in the hands of a few, leading to policies that primarily serve the interests, of those few. The next public policy theory we'll be discussing, is the group theory. The group theory assumes that, interest groups are the primary actors, in the policy-making process. These interest groups include associations of individuals or organizations that share common goals and actively seek to influence policymakers. This theory can be applied to public policy by assuming that policymakers are influenced by the demands of interest groups and that they make decisions that benefit these groups rather than the interests of the general public. The group theory essentially suggests that Policies are the result of negotiations and compromises between different interest groups, each advocating for their own preferences and objectives. The next public policy theory we'll be discussing is institutionalism. Institutionalism is a theory that assumes that institutions play a significant role in shaping public policy. Some of these institutions are legislatures, courts, government departments, and international organizations. These institutions play a vital role in either policy formation, policy implementation, or policy evaluation. The institutionalism theory can be applied to public policy by assuming that policymakers are constrained by the rules and procedures of institutions and that they make decisions that are consistent with these rules and procedures. We will now discuss the incremental theory. The incremental theory, or incrementalism, is a theory of public policy that assumes that change is gradual. This theory can be applied to public policy by assuming that policymakers will make small changes to existing policies rather than making large, sweeping changes. In other words, the incremental theory suggests that policy changes occur incrementally over time rather than through sudden and drastic shifts. Policymakers therefore tend to make small adjustments or modifications to existing policies based on feedback and evaluation, rather than undertaking radical transformations. Next up, we'll be discussing the rational choice theory. The rational choice theory views policymakers as rational actors who weigh the costs and benefits of different policy options before making decisions. This theory assumes that Policymakers act in their self-interest and aim to maximize desired outcomes considering factors such as political feasibility, public opinion, and economic constraints. This theory can essentially be applied to public policy by assuming that policymakers are rational human beings 
who make decisions that they believe, will achieve their desired outcomes. These five theories, are not the only theories that can be applied to public policy. Some of the other theories include the following. The Advocacy Coalition Framework. The Advocacy Coalition Framework, or the ACF, tells a simple story of policy action, within a complex policy-making system. This theory assumes that, people engage in politics and public discourse, to turn their beliefs, into public policy. So, as policy actors, such people, will form advocacy coalitions with various stakeholders who share their beliefs, and will often compete with other coalitions, to turn their views and beliefs, into public policy. And lastly, the policy output analysis. The policy output analysis, as a theory of public policy, examines the actual implementation and impact of public policies. This theory focuses on evaluating the effectiveness and efficiency of policy implementation by considering factors such as the allocation of resources, bureaucratic processes, and the outcomes. Before we move on, if you haven't already, please take time to subscribe to our channel. In conclusion, these are just a few of the many theories that can be applied to public policy. The most appropriate theory for a particular policy will depend on the specific circumstances of that policy. Each of these theories has its own strengths and weaknesses, and no single theory can fully explain the complex process of public policy making. However, by understanding these theories, we can better understand how public policies are made and how they can be changed. The theories discussed in this video, and some which were not discussed, will assist government officials, policymakers, politicians, civil society groups, and the general public, with valuable insights into how public policy is formulated, implemented, and evaluated. We've come to the end of our video, on the various theories of public policy. If you have any theory that we haven't touched on, and would like to share your thoughts on that theory. Please leave us a comment below, and share that theory with us, as well as a short description. So, thank you for watching. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, and subscribe to our channel, for more thought-provoking content. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you again next time. But until then, check out these other videos, under our channel. Kano Consultants. For professional advice, you can trust.